Hello, welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, we would like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my Stories for Wonderful Children. story every night. Every single night I tell a story. And so you may have wondered where these stories come from. And tonight I will tell you, on my way home from work, when I'm about halfway home, there's a spot along the road where it just looks like an ordinary curb with grass. But if you're wearing special magical spectacles, you can see a little sparkling gate there, and I turn my car off the road. I drive through the gate, and if someone were driving behind me when they saw this, they would see my car just disappear. And when I drive through the gate, I arrive in a great room. I park my car and I get out. All around the walls of the room are books. Books go up and up and up, as high as the tallest tree in our neighborhood, and the room is as big as our backyard. All around the edge of the room, there are fairies. Fairies dressed in blue, fairies dressed in brown. They wear white. They wear leather clothing, and, and white. they flit from and white. They flit from book to book, opening them, reading with oh, like. Flit means to sort of fly quickly, fly short distances quickly. They flit from book to book, opening them, looking things up, and then scribbling things on pieces of paper. They are story fairies, and it is their job to keep track of all my stories. All of the stories in this great magical library are mine. And every day I go, and the story fairies who work for me give me a story so that I might give it to you. Some days they give me fairy stories, and some days they give me Manila stories. But the reason I'm telling you about this tonight is that when I went there today, on my way home from work, the chief story fairy, whose name, surprisingly enough, is Rebecca. I was sort of surprised when I hired her. I said, you know, my daughter's name is Rebecca, too. And she said, oh, that's nice. I said, yes, it's a very good name. But anyway, my chief story fairy, Rebecca, flew up to me as soon as I parked my car. And as I got out, she said, I'm afraid there's been a problem. And I said, what kind of problem? I'm in a hurry. I'm already running late from leaving work, and I have to get home for dinner, because I know my girls are going to want to do piano practice after dinner. And if I'm late, we won't have time for all of that. And Rebecca said, well, we had the story all ready for you, the one that had Mulan in it, and the one that had Rebecca. But she said, it was stolen. Stolen, I said. Who would dare to steal one of my stories? And the story fairy, Rebecca, looked around. She looked left. She looked right. She flew right up to me, and she whispered in my ear. She said, we're not sure, but we think it was the bookworm, I said. What would the bookworm want with one of my stories? Rebecca shrugged. She said, well, they're very interesting stories, and the bookworm thinks stories are delicious. And I said, well, that's terrible. What am I supposed to tell them tonight? And she said, well, it hasn't been gone very long. She said, maybe you could catch him. And so I walked out through the room and out the door on the other side into the land where that room is. It's called Literata, the name of the land, and it is full of rooms much like that one. Each room is owned by someone who tells stories, and it is full of all of the stories that are theirs. They're always being added to, and the land of Literata is full of story fairies, and they work to help keep stories categorized and have them all in their places so that you can find them when you need them. Now, sometimes 
a story fairy turns sort of not really evil, but a story fairy turns greedy and some greedy. Greedy? And sort of mean. Sort of mean and sort of they want everything for themselves. And that sometimes a story fairy will steal a story that isn't theirs. And when that happens, the story fairy's wings fall off and they become a sort of worm-like thing, a big green wormy thing called a bookworm. And there's, Holy cow. there's one that was the very first bookworm. And they most bookworms keep their names. And sometimes, after a while, they become fairies again. And sometimes they don't. But bookworms eat stories instead of reading them. And the very first bookworm, who had been a bookworm for a long time and had eaten many, many stories, and so he had been a bookworm so long that everyone had forgotten his real name and everyone just called him the bookworm now. So I went in search of the bookworm. It was not difficult, which was good, because I was in a hurry to get home tonight. I walked out into Literata and I looked, and right there, beside the steps, into my story vault, there was a hole in the ground. Well, I knew who was in that hole. It was a little big for me to get into. So instead, I just knelt down, and I stuck my arm way down in the hole as far as it would go, all the way up to my shoulder, and I felt the tail of something slimy, and I grabbed it, and I pulled. I pulled until I could get both hands on that tail, and then I pulled harder, and with a pop, a big, fat, green, slimy bookworm popped out of the ground, and he had in his hand the last page of the story about Mulan and Rebecca. And as I pulled him out, he stuffed that last page into his mouth and <coughs> chewed it up and swallowed and said, Mmm, that was a delicious story, Dr. Wendelin. That was one of your best. And I said, Ah, you ate my story. What am I supposed to do tonight? What story am I supposed to tell my little girls? And the bookworm said, Burp, not my problem. And he crawled off. And as he crawled off, I sort of gave him, I shouldn't have done this, it was kind of mean, but I sort of gave him a little kick in the butt. Because <laughs> I was kind of mad at it. <sighs> but at that time I knew Mommy would be wondering where I was and why I wasn't home for dinner already. And so I went back into my, my story vault. And I told Rebecca the story that I wanted to tell tomorrow night so that she and the other story fairies could start getting it ready for me. And then I got back in my car, and I came home. And that is the reason why tonight I did not have the story that you wanted about Mulan and Rebecca. Instead, I had to tell you this story, the story of where my stories come from. And now this story, like all the others I have told you, is yours, and you can put it in your story vaults. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com, and you can also find us on most social media. I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story. Music